You've now got your K20D50M tower kit. So where do you go to get the source code and the example projects? If you start on freescale.com, a shortcut is to go to freescale.com slash tower. There you'll find a list of all the boards and the tower products here. If we look under controller and processor modules, Kinetis ARM, K20D50M is the first one in the list. So it has its own separate page and shows you all the relevant documentation and jumpstart information under the documentation tab. You can find the software labs and a quick start guide. So download these two like this and save it. I've already done this and put it in this directory. This is the file here and you'll notice it is a zip file. I put it in a temporary directory I'm just calling AAAK20. When I unzip it, it creates this quick start guide and this subdirectory structure. This quick start guide has all the basic startup information needed to get, get started with the product. First it will familiarize you with the connectors and switches and features of the tower board. It will show you also the default jumper configurations. And I'd want to draw your attention to this particular aspect, which is download and install the software tools. The p and &E Micro Kinetis Tower Toolkit is required to operate the onboard OS JTAG debugger. And to get that, we just double click on the link within the document itself. And it takes us to the p and &E Micro download area, and you click here to download it. So again, I've already saved that in the subdirectory, and that is the Tower Q Toolkit file. So please install that now. It's very straightforward and installs the proper drivers and USB to serial converters. So now that I've uh, extracted the labs, if we look in the directories, under this directory there's a PDF for the lab itself, the lab materials, and under this directory, the build directory, you'll see a Code Warrior and an IAR. So you can use either tool set. We're going to use Code Warrior and there's a README that goes along with this that has the basic general directions for all these Code Warrior projects. It was written for Code Warrior 10.1, but works just fine using Code Warrior 10.2 as well. So let me take you through those steps. We'll start by opening Code Warrior. Here we should select a workspace, and for convenience, we're going to select the same workspace directory or the same directory that we downloaded the files to. AAA K20, K20, and this Kinetis 50 megahertz SC directory. The workspace doesn't automatically import any of the projects. What we do, a quick way, is we right click on the space and say import, or you can also go file import. And it would normally open up like this. We'd say general import a existing project into the workspace. Click next. It asks for the root directory. Again we use exactly the same directory as before where our sample code happens to be. Now you could have sample code in another directory and in that case you would copy the projects into the workspace. We're going to select all of the projects that are there and then finish will import them. When you first do this, Code Warrior likes to perform some operations such as indexing on these files and so you should always look in this lower right hand corner to see what's going on. 
if you're confused and it looks like Code Warrior is not doing anything, it is probably doing something in the background and that's causing you not to be able to you know, select a file or something of that nature. So we have to wait for these operations to complete. So now that they've completed, let's run one of these. We'll try the first one, which is an analog to digital converter demo. Now, any project you can have multiple configurations. This one has flash configuration and RAM configuration. We'll pick RAM, and the hammer will build the demo. So now that it's complete, we'll go to debug. The first time I click debug, since no configuration has been chosen yet, it will ask me for one. But that doesn't always pop up this way, so there's a little drop-down arrow to the right of the debug symbol, and it shows you all the multitude of debug configurations. So we've got several projects all named with the same debug configurations. I happen to know it's the RAM OS JTAG option, second one in the list. The other way of looking at this is if we go down to the bottom of the list, we can look at the debug configurations. Here, they're all in order. And um, I know it's one of these RAM OS JTAGs. And it will show me over in project title name which project this name is associated with. And the name is specified here. So in fact, I'm actually going to change the name slightly and call it ADC Demo and close. So now I can pick ADC Demo from the list. I know for sure that's the one. And it will switch over to the debug perspective and start loading the files. Again, look in the bottom right hand corner for what is what the uh, Code Warrior is doing. Okay, so your typical debug perspective shows you the threads that have op run. Uh, this debug configuration was pre-configured in order to go through the startup code automatically and then stop at main, which is typically what you do when you're debugging a C project. We have the first file, the main C file here is showing. We have a disassembly window. We have a area for watch variables up here. And I want to show you one quick tip and trick is if you double click on the title of one of these tabs, it will open it up to full screen. Also from here you can click the debug icon and get back to your debugging controls. So I'm going to go back to the default perspective just because that's what most people will be looking at. And then uh, the debugging controls are here. We're going to resume F8. This would be to suspend or, or sort of break your code execution. And this is to actually terminate the debug session. We have other commands here such as step into, step over, and return. So I'm going to resume operation. And right now my board, I can see that it's blinking some the blue and green lights and it is running. Now this is where the PNE toolkit comes into play. If we run the terminal utility from the PNE OSBDM OSJTAG toolkit, we'll see USB COM as the port. We're going to open that serial port. Now I only have one cable connected between my PC and the K20D50M tower board. It's multiplexing both the debug, OSBDM debugger, and the serial port. And we can see the program is outputting to a terminal 
the values, the whatever it's reading on the potentiometer. So I'll turn it down. See as I turn it down, it goes down. It should be close to zero. And as I go up, all the way. And I'll pause the debugger. As you see, my terminal window stops updating. Start it again. Terminal window is resumed, updating. And that's it. To end the session, we can terminate. We'll go back to the C perspective. And now you have a nice starting point for working with your own projects. And I encourage you to go through each one of these demos and, and see what they're all about. Thank you.